What is going on guys, welcome back to another Rugby Challenge 4 video, and yes, obviously this is a Rugby Challenge 4 week. We're uploading Rugby Challenge 4 videos every single day throughout this whole week. Uh, today we're going to be talking about what the marketing, uh, sort of like what areas of the world they reach out to for Rugby Challenge uh, 4 and Rugby Challenge in general. Uh, and obviously the countries I feel that they should be targeting, but anyway, it's just my opinion, but let's go ahead and get into the video. Welcome back to another video on the Rugby Channel, please make sure you go ahead and leave a like, comment, subscribe, click the notification button, as well as please go ahead and follow us on our social media platforms to be up to date with the channel. Okay, so as we all know, Rugby Challenge 4 is meant to be coming out next year, and uh, usually they reach out to sort of the Southern Hemisphere teams targeting Super Rugby and like the All Blacks, Australia, South Africa, and this time around they've targeted England as well. Uh, although we don't really know what licensing, what other licensing clubs and stuff they have at the moment. Uh, so basically I'm going to show you guys a map uh, coming up now. Uh, so basically the dark blue areas are the areas which Rugby Challenge currently reaches out to. So as you can see Argentina is there because they have the Jaguars and potentially the Argentinian team. Uh, the South Africa because obviously they have the South African clubs that are in Super Rugby. So like the, the Sharks and so on. Uh, and they also have the Springboks themselves. Uh, so then Australia and New Zealand, again, they have the Super Rugby and they have the two international licensing for that team. Uh, Japan, because obviously the Sun Wolves are in it. Although I'm starting to think, are the Sun Wolves actually going to be in it? Because the Sun Wolves obviously aren't going to be in the Super Rugby after next year. So are they still going to be featured in Rugby Challenge? I don't know. It's all kind of up in the air. Uh, and then obviously England, because they've got the international license for England. Uh, so, as you can see, they reach out to a very limited amount of countries. Uh, I mean, in total here, you have one, two, three, four, five. You have about six countries that they actually reach out to, uh, which isn't too bad. I mean, it's covering, I mean, England, a big national country, but, like, a lot of the English people are what will want to play as your clubs uh, rather than the actual international team. Uh, and then, obviously, with Argentina, I mean, that's a good marketing bit there because, obviously... They have only one professional club, which is Jaguars. And uh, then if, if they have the license for the international team of Argentina, uh, they've kind of nailed that one. Uh, South Africa, they've nailed that one. Australia and New Zealand. And then obviously with them not having the license for the Japanese team, because we know uh, Rugby 20 has that, uh, they've lost out on one there, to be honest with you, because they would have had a big audience there to target. But and otherwise, I mean, with the Sun Wolves, it's still a potential thing. Uh, so, and that next up now is the countries I think that they should be targeting. Uh, I mean, like, Uruguay is next to Argentina, as you can see that one down there. Uh, I feel like if they targeted that and got the SLAR involved, which is like the South American Professional League, uh, or just had the license for Uruguay, I think they would sell an ex a few extra copies, because uh, as it is right now, Uruguay aren't licensed in any rugby game, which is really unfortunate, because Uruguay were quite good in the Rugby World Cup. Uh, and then, as you can see, then, uh, America... Is the next one I've highlighted. Uh, that's because the MLR hasn't actually been announced in any game yet. And with that being so professional as it is and getting a good following, uh, it's quite a shock, really. I would have thought somebody would have wanted, would have wanted to try and get the license for that. Uh, like I said, we only right now only know Super Rugby is in Rugby Challenge Four. They could yet to get it, but I'd be very very like shocked if they did get it, cause just because of their track record with licensing and stuff. Uh, but yeah, I feel like the MLR is a massive one they're missing out. Uh, and then as you can see, the, the three countries I've highlighted in, in Europe, which are missing out, is Germany, Spain, and Portugal. Uh, those obviously being growing nations in the whole rugby universe, and I just feel like them not being licensed in a game either is kind of a shock, just because you would sell a few extra copies. Well, I say a few, I mean, you could reach a few thousand, really, I mean, selling them in this certain countries, especially with the MLR. I mean, with the following that has I like, in America, I feel... That you would sell a hell of a lot of copies. So I'm quite surprised Rugby Challenge isn't really mentioning that. But anyway guys you let me know in the comments section. What do you think about this in general. Uh, do you feel that they're missing out on a lot of marketing opportunities here. Or do you feel like they should just stick to what they're doing at the moment. Uh, personally I would love to see the SLAR. Which is the South American League put into it. And the MLR. And maybe Spain or Portugal. Uh, but that's just my opinion. Let me know in the comments section down below. What you think. 
Uh, please make sure as well you go ahead and like the video to show your support. And like I said, this is Rugby Challenge 4 week. I'm uploading Rugby Challenge 4 videos every single day this week. And uh, we're doing quite a few good ones as well. So stay tuned for that. And if you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and do so so you don't miss out on them. And yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. I've been Andrew. I will see you in another upload. Peace out, guys.